On October 20th, Rajon Rondo and CP3 showed down in the square circle after James Harden got shoved by Mr. Brandon Ingram. But why did these two point guards, kings of decision making, and basketball IQ maestros let their emotions get the better of them in this regular season matchup with two teams who needed every regular season game possible? Why the hell did Rondo spit on CP3? What the hell did CP3 say to prompt Rondo to spit? Why did LeBron not step in? Before any of those questions can get answered, we have to look at the storied beef history of Rondo and CP3. This might be deeper than one ill-advised spitball. Now, before we can get to the beef origins, you already know to click the subscribe button, grab that popcorn, and cue that intro. Paul Pierce stated, I am not surprised at all. Rondo and Chris Paul have never liked each other. This goes back to maybe Rondo's rookie or second year. I'm surprised this is their first fight actually because they have never gotten along. So let's rewind. On December 12, 2008, the New Orleans Hornets, which was Chris Paul's old team, they played Rajon Rondo and the Boston Celtics in Boston. Now remember these two point guards were considered the league's top point guards with CP3 finishing second in MVP voting the year before and Rajon Rondo winning the championship against the Lakers. Both were upper echelon and killing the league. While everyone knows how nasty CP3 was, to give those an idea of how serious Rajon Rondo was that season, per 100 possessions, he averaged 21.5 points per game with 12.5 assists per game, and the Celtics winning 62 games. They ended up beating the Hornets 94-82 coming off the back end of a back-to-back. -back. Both these guys didn't play that well to be honest, but it was the results of the game that basically told the stories of their careers in one match. CP3 scored 20 points, had 14 assists through 41 minutes of play, and a Hornets loss, and the Hornets record dropped down to 12-7. and 7. Rondo only played 33 minutes and had a mediocre performance, while KG and Paul Pierce tore it up with 37 points combined, and Rondo only shooting 33% from the field with 10 points and 2 assists, while the Celtics improved to 22-2. To add to the stat line summarizing the story of their careers, Rondo made sure to add some gas to the already burning ego of CP3. Post game, Rondo went to CP3 and reportedly said, Paul, I've got a ring and you're never going to win one. Which triggered CP3 and a little scuffle broke out and we got a tiny preview of the showdown in LA. While this was the season that Rondo played as one of the true leaders on the team, it has been perceived through NBA history that Rondo has simply been a be beneficiary of being on a team with three Hall of Famers on a ride to a chip. But this attitude towards Rondo's sole chip can be seen with CP3's frustration with Rondo as well. These two guys are truly a tale of two cities. We have two point guards who have opposite playing styles and situations. One was a defensive, high IQ, low scoring point guard of a championship team that was laced with all-stars. The other was an all-star, all-around point guard of a playoff team who is an MVP caliber player with no Hall of Fame level players on his squad and has never won a championship. To this date, both have accumulated more accolades but still have the same championship resume. In 2009, these two were battling for best point guard in the league. And fast forward to 2018, 10 years later, CP3 and Rondo's beef can be classified as two hyper-competitive, high IQ point guards having opposite-sided careers clashing in another battle for supremacy. One thing that should be understood is that this beef didn't just start now. This beef has been existing for over 10 years and finally just hit a boiling point in LA with spit flying, arm swinging, and ejections. You know, thanks for watching. For more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. As always, don't be mad at me, be mad at yourself for being an underachiever. Let the outro music rock.